This device is a Venturi. And all a Venturi is, is it's a tube that has a throat that's designed to accelerate the fluid, thereby reducing the pressure. Venturis are used in carburetors, and those carburetors are used to mix fuel and air in a variety of different devices, like lawnmowers and tractors and chainsaws. And until about 1980, most automobiles also used carburetors to mix fuel and air. Venturis are also used as venturi meters by connecting pressure transducers to these ports to detect the difference of the pressure and to use that to give some measure of what the velocity is. If the flow upstream of this throat is inviscid, then a venturi is described by the Bernoulli equation, which allows us to generate an algebraic relation that connects pressure, kinetic energy, and gravitational potential energy in an inviscid fluid flow. This Venturi has a connection that allows us to introduce flow, and it also has a manometer. Manometer. That connects these two locations in the tube, and thereby allows us to measure the pressure difference between the two. As we increase the flow through this system, we should see a change in the pressure between these two locations. And the flow itself is visualized by these pieces of thread. So right now there's no flow, but if we start the flow, we'll see a couple of different things. One, we can see that the flow starts to increase, as visualized by this thread. And then secondly, we can see that this manometer is reading out that there's a pressure difference between this location upstream of the throat and the location in the throat itself. And you can see that there's a correlation between the two. As I decrease the flow rate, you can see that the pressure difference decreases. And as I increase the flow rate, this pressure difference increases. Now, why is it that the flow is related to the pressure? Why is it that the visualization of the velocity in the system can directly be linked to the pressure difference between these two locations? Well, what explains this to, this is a, to us is a combination of a conservation of mass analysis in the tube combined with the integral form of the Bernoulli equation. There are two analyses that we can use to analyze this venturi. The first one is a conservation of mass analysis. And that tells us that whatever amount of mass is coming in through this thick region of the tube has to be going out through this narrow region of the tube. If we assume that this fluid is incompressible and the density isn't changing, mass in has to equal mass out. What that conservation of mass analysis tells us is that as the cross-sectional area of this section is reduced, the velocity has to be increased to cancel that out. We then combine that with a Bernoulli equation analysis. And what the Bernoulli equation says is that as we follow along a streamline, this fluid is trading back and forth between three different forms of energy. One, pressure, which is stored ability to do work. One, dynamic pressure, one half rho u squared. And three, the gravitational potential energy. Now, this flow is horizontal, so we don't have to pay any attention to the gravitational potential energy term. And what that says is that as this fluid moves from a large diameter section of the tube to a small diameter section of the tube, conservation of mass tells us that it has to accelerate. And the Bernoulli equation says that if it's accelerated, the pressure must have, must have gone down. So as we flow fluid through this system, we know that the fluid here is going relatively slowly. Here it must be going faster. And because it's moving faster here, the pressure must be lower. The net effect of the pressure here being lower is that this side of the denominator must increase relative to this side. To derive the Bernoulli equation, we make a number of approximations about the fluid flow. We assume that it's steady, that it's inviscid, and that it's incompressible. And then we write F equals ma for an infinitesimal fluid element. When we do that, we come up with both a differential and integral form of the governing equation. This tells us that as we move along the streamline, the total pressure doesn't change, where this total pressure is the sum of the pressure, the dynamic pressure, and the gravitational potential energy. So why do we use Venturi's? Well, Venturi's are advantageous for a couple of reasons, and they're advantageous for a couple of things. Venturi's are simple, they have no moving parts, and they're inexpensive to make. All that is required is that we take a tube and we narrow it down in the throat. It's an effective way to change the pressure locally and to use that to draw a liquid into uh, an airstream. In the case of a carburetor, an airstream would be entering the engine, and this change in the pressure can be used to draw the fluid all the way into the flow. 
Another thing that's advantageous about this sort of setup is that even as we change this flow and we change the pressure difference, if we work out the math, the amount of fuel that will be drawn in will always be proportional to the volume flow rate of the air. And so the fuel error ratio will always be fixed no matter how much we change the input. In an old automobile engine, what this means is that you can change the throttle valve as much as you want and the fuel air uh, ratio won't change. Another thing that's great about a venturi is that it's an inexpensive technique with no moving parts that allows us to measure a flow without perturbing it. So here we're measuring the flow rate using a manometer. And in a modern system, you wouldn't use a manometer. You'd use two pressure transducers. But regardless, as long as I have a tube and I narrow that tube down, if I have two pressure transducers that I connect to ports, I can measure the rate of flow of this air without incorporating any losses. In contrast, if I were to put a fan in the way and measure how fast that fan spins, I would cause a considerable pressure drop. The integral form of the Bernoulli equation is relatively straightforward to implement. So it's not so much how we use it, but when and where. So we might ask, where and when is it appropriate to use the Bernoulli equation in a flow such as this? The approximations we use when we derive the Bernoulli equation is that it was incompressible, that it was inviscid, and that it was steady. We know that it's incompressible as long as the Mach number is low enough. We know that it's inviscid as long as the Reynolds number is high enough. And, well, it's not really steady. If I turn this on, you can see the flow here is unsteady. In fact, this is a turbulent unsteady flow. Now, we can approximate a turbulent unsteady flow as a steady flow, but we can only do that if the Reynolds number is high enough that that approximation is appropriate. So the two requirements that are necessary to make this analysis acceptable is that the Mach number has to be low, and the Reynolds number has to be quite high. It's also true that no matter what happens, our approximations will never be correct everywhere. In a flow like this, our inviscid approximation always fails right at the wall. So if we look at, say, a one millimeter region right next to the surface of the tube, we'll find that the inviscid approximation isn't correct. Now, it turns out that even though that's true, that doesn't really change what we see in the manometer. And so from an engineering standpoint, the Bernoulli equation is a very good approximation of this flow. So, a Venturi is a simple device that manipulates an airflow by moving from a large diameter region in a tube to a small diameter throat. It's effective for changing the pressure in the throat region and using that either to, either to measure the rate of the flow or to pull fluid into the system. It's advantageous because it's simple and because it doesn't have any moving parts. And it's a good system to analyze with the Bernoulli equation because it's typically a good approximation to assume that the flow through the system has a low Mach number but a high Reynolds number. There are some places where the approximations associated with the Bernoulli equation are not good and lead to an incorrect answer, but those errors don't actually affect the pressure difference that we typically use the Venturi for, either to mix fuel and air or to make that measurement.